So far, we talked about the ps command that checks for the running processes and then the net start command that checks for the listening ports. Now these are all run from the same system. Now there is another command that is useful and that is run from outside the system and that is netcat. So what netcat does is it can do a lot of things but the most useful feature of netcat is to check if a port is open or not. For that you do nc dash z v then a host ip or a domain name let's say google.com and then a port number you press enter and it will tell you if that port number is open or not in this case it is open so if you look at the man page you can see dash z means zero io mode used for scanning and dash v is used for verbose mode which will show output like this where do we use netcat Good question. So if you go here again and see that it's running on all the ports, right? So that would mean both HTTP and SSHT should be available on both of these IPs. We can verify that using netcat z v and uh, let me just clear it and port number 18. And indeed it is listening there. What happens if you do 81? Connection refused. That means there is no service running on port number 81. Similarly, if you do 192, one term, again, it works too because it's running on, it's listening on all the network interfaces. Now, what happens if I change the Nginx config to listen only on loopback interface? I'm just going to make a copy of the same line so that I can simply, you know, uncomment it. So remember in Nginx, Anything that start with hash is a comment and it's not a valid configuration. So I go back and give it 127.0.0.1 and restart. So you don't have to type the commands again. You can press Ctrl R which will put you into a reverse search mode and then you just type the command. For example, in this case, I'm just going to search for restart. It will find the command that corresponds to that. In our case, it's sudo systemctl restart nginx. I just have to press enter and it will restart nginx. So now if I do this, it says connection refuse. Now this is exactly what it means. This is how we use netcat. Again, this is my local machine. This is the Windows local machine. If I do an nc dash zb port number 80, it says connection refused. So this is how you check what the exact issue is. For example, if you were trying to open this website and it's not loading, there could be a number of reasons why it's not loading. The first issue that you should be checking is if you do not have access to the website, you should check whether this port is accessible from, uh, from wherever you're trying to access the website from. So in this case, it means the port number 80 is connection refused. That means there is no firewall issue. It's that there is nothing listening on port number 80 for this IP address. The next step would be you go back to the server and check if the process is running. In our case, we know that it is Nginx and yeah, we can see that it is running. Then the next step that you do is you do netstat tulnp and see what, what exactly is listening on port number 80. And here you can see that it's not listening on all the network interfaces and that is the issue i hope that made sense i have reverted the nginx configuration and made it running on all the network interfaces so that this should succeed now it does so the next command that we need to talk about is curl this is like the swiss army knife or uh, this one tool that is used by everyone regardless of if you are a devops engineer or a developer curl is going to be there if you are working with web servers or web applications so it's important that you understand how how to use it and uh, how to get things done by using curl so what is curl so if you look at the man page curl is a tool to transfer data from o to a server using one of the supported protocols and they have a lot of protocols supported but here we will be using it for http and https so what it means is you just do curl space the website 
you know the IP address or the address of the website and that's it it just gives you the HTML for the website now this is not very useful we need to see more information we use curl dash v which means verbose now it's gonna show a lot more information it's gonna show all the request headers and it's gonna show all the response headers I will talk about headers in another video but for now just understand that curl can display the headers now sometimes we don't need to see the content of the website which is this this HTML page here we just need to see the headers we can use curl dash v and then dash o o means write the output into a file here we're going to use dash dev dash null which if you remember means that discard the file or discard the output so if you do this it's going to show only the headers now it have some useless stuff here like uh, the progress and uh, things like that we don't need that we can suppress that using dash s so here much better we can combine all of them into single word which is curl dash vso space dev null and the website address which will give the same output now the next thing that we need to talk about is is http methods and http headers we'll talk about that in the next video that's it for now thank you for watching please don't forget to leave a like if you actually like the video or a dislike if you dislike the video i would really appreciate that and thanks again see you another time